your mom's dead. Okay. Now, what I want to ask you Wait, okay. is, <laughs> your your mom's your mom's passed away. Okay, and she's deceased. All right. Now, what I want to ask you, did you have involvement in this? Okay. Just, no. Hang on, hang on, listen to me for just a second, okay? What happened with your mom that night? I don't know what happened with my mom at all. Okay, you, just listen to me, okay, sweetheart? You, you know what happened to your mom, okay? And I know that you know. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know, my name is Megs, Megan, or Spooky. Whichever you like to call me, and this is Spooky History with Megs. Let's get into it. The beginning of this tragic tale begins with the birth of Dee Dee Blanchard, the deceased victim or villain. You decide. Let's begin with the birth of and early life of Claudine Petrie Blanchard, also known as Dee Dee Blanchard. Dee Dee Blanchard was born on May 3, 1963 in Shock Bay, Louisiana, one of five children to parents Claude Petrie and Emma Desclair. Dee Dee was the youngest of five children and carried her father's feminine namesake. She was spoiled by both parents and often used emotional blackmail to manipulate everyone to bend to her will. According to interviews done by her relatives, Dee Dee was a vengeful person even at an early age. She demanded her way and stopped at nothing to get what she wanted and Dee needed. Dee Dee like as a child? What was Dee Dee like Dee as Dee? a child? She was okay. We were pretty close, me and her. Yeah, we'd, I'd give her everything that she wanted anyway, whatever she wanted, and except a dog in the house. I didn't want that. Now we wind up, we got two dogs in the house. <laughs> <clears throat> but it's, she was something else. Her teen years began her petty crimes lifestyle. She would shoplift and often stole money and treasured items from her siblings as an act to pay them back if she felt slighted. She was the only child that slept in her mother's bed. The rest slept on their own. It was believed that she was her mother's favorite and that's why she got away with so much as a child. Her father promised her that she would never want for anything. He kept his word and thus began Dee Dee's quest to get what she wanted, when she wanted, no matter the cost. As she grew into adulthood, she began stealing and writing bad checks. Even her family members began to dislike her. According to Deja, yes. Yeah. yeah, she got what she deserved. And all the, all the brothers and sisters don't care about D.D. no more. Gypsy, uh, she got cremated. She said, what you want me to do with the ashes? Everybody said, I don't want her. I Darn don't want her. I told flush that in the toilet. <laughs> they want her sister said, flush that in the toilet. She said, we're going to bring that she in. She began these petty crimes and developed a knack for lying to cover her crimes and anything else she didn't want the world to know. In 1990, when Dee Dee was 24, she met a young Rod Blanchard who was 17 at the time. The two dated, and in the infancy of the relationship, Dee Dee became pregnant with their daughter, Gypsy Rose. Living in Louisiana and being brought up in a small southern town, Rod proposed to Claudine, and they were married soon after. The marriage failed only three months later when Rob realized he was not actually in love with Dee Dee. They soon divorced and Rob paid child support for his daughter every month and during the last few years he paid up to $1,200 per month until Gypsy was 18 years old. Rob in the beginning was allowed to see Gypsy and speak with her over the phone. As time progressed, Dee Dee would soon start to make excuses that Gypsy couldn't meet her father due to illnesses that started early in childhood. She eventually cut all visits out because of Gypsy's strict medication schedule. What illnesses did your mom say that you had? Um, asthma, epilepsy, um, hearing impaired, vision impaired, um, fed with a feeding tube, paralyzed from the waist down, um, slow, so uh, retardation, and among other things, I just can't remember them. <laughs>
She wanted to keep Gypsy's age from her as she grew older and Rod thought it was odd that she didn't want him to tell her when she turned 18 because Gypsy didn't know how old she really was and wouldn't understand. Rob played along without questioning the strange request. Why would he question the mother that in his eyes had devoted her entire life to take care of what he believed at the time to be their gravely ill daughter? This was how Dee Dee got away with it for so long. Her mother appeared to have taken great steps to keep Gypsy in a very juvenile role making her act several years younger than her actual age. It appears that Gypsy was not even aware of what her actual age was. I called her for her 18th birthday, and Didi said, don't tell her she's 18, you know. She, I'm like, what do you mean, don't tell her she's 18? She doesn't know she's 18, it's her 18th birthday. Ah, well, she, she don't know she's 18, she's, you know. I thought it was weird, you know. I, she, I mean, I always did know that she, she told me her mental capacity was, you know, like five years behind, you know, when she was like 50. Why would a devout and loving mother need to create a web of lies that would have the world think her child was near death's door? Dee Dee became a CNA where she had limited medical knowledge and in most cases of munch housing by proxy, now known as factitious disorder, where the parent or guardian often has worked in the medical field in some capacity. Dee Dee with a newborn in a failed marriage, now a single mother, is now seeing that she is no longer the center of attention as she once was. She may have unintentionally started to seek out a way to get that attention in a different way. Rod has said in interviews, the medical issues began to appear when Gypsy was just three months old. The first illness was suspected sleep apnea. Even though there were several overnight sleep studies done on Gypsy at the local hospital, there was no sign of Gypsy suffering from sleep apnea. When that failed, Dee Dee was convinced that Gypsy suffered a wide range of illnesses due to a chromosomal mutation. This began a string of doctor visits and false medical histories given by Dee Dee to various physicians over the next two decades. Right from birth, three months old, Dee Dee was telling me that she had uh, sleep apnea and she needed a, a breathing uh, machine or, or breathing monitor machine, which, I mean, until they'll stay, I don't know if that was real or not, you know, it, it escalated from then. Dee Dee and Gypsy were living in Louisiana with her parents until Dee Dee could get back on her feet. Dee Dee had gotten into a car accident, hurting her leg that caused her to be unable to work as it healed. This surely gained Dee Dee attention and kit glove treatment for her parents and others in the community. Dee Dee was healing but it did not keep her from writing bad checks and shoplifting in various stores. She was constantly evading the local law enforcement. It has been said that Dee Dee could never come back to Louisiana because of warrants for shoplifting and bad checks. While still living with her parents, Dee Dee took care of her aging and ill mother. It has been said in interviews with other family members that Dee Dee possibly hastened her mother's demise by starving her and over medicating her. It was pointed out that she wouldn't clean her mother after she soiled herself in a timely manner as well. Your mama dirty and asking for food and not want to feed her. Yeah. That's evil. Were you sad at all when you heard she was dead? Me? I, I didn't believe it. It didn't. Uh, it just didn't sink. It, it took a few days before, you know. I, I didn't believe that sh she was dead. I thought it was another one of her Didi trips. Was starving her. Like she wasn't. Dee Dee wasn't giving her anything to eat. I asked her sister. You know, I was like, I hate to ask this, but you think Dee Dee had anything to do with her her mom's death? And she, you know, said, Now I wonder. When Gypsy was around seven or eight years old, she fell off a motorbike, causing a minor abrasion that Dee Dee made seem as though it was more severe 
and from that day forward, Gypsy was confined to a wheelchair. 2001, Gypsy participated in the Special Olympics. Soon, the two left Dee Dee's father and stepmother's home and moved to Slidell, Louisiana, about 76 miles away from Rod and his new wife, Christy, and their immediate family. It was believed that Dee Dee may have tainted her stepmother's food and drink with weed killer. No charges were ever brought in that case because Dee Dee had already moved far enough away that she posed no real threat to her stepmother. The stepmother was bedridden for nine months and almost died. She soon recovered after Dee Dee moved. Right where she went, she was, she was doing all kinds of stuff. She was poisoning my stepmother. Um, supposedly, she, she was giving her some um, Roundup and her food and stuff. She was putting some poison in my food, the same thing she had put in the plant. And she wound up, she stayed nine months in bed. After that, she couldn't get up. I didn't think she was going to make it. There was nothing she couldn't get away with. Dee Dee did, however, continue her small petty crimes of shoplifting and writing fraudulent checks in her new city, but she was saved by a little storm named Hurricane Katrina that destroyed most of Louisiana. So in 2005, Dee Dee and Gypsy Rose needed to be relocated due to the destruction of the aftermath of Katrina. They moved to their final city and state, Springfield, Missouri. They were airlifted there and given a new home through the charity Habitat for Humanity. The community welcomed Gypsy and her mother with open arms and helped them as much as they could. Hurricane Katrina provided the cover Dee Dee needed as all documentation on Gypsy was lost to the flooding This allowed for Dee Dee to turn back the clock on Gypsy's age as well as be the primary source for Gypsy's medical history. She claimed Gypsy was much younger than she was and told doctors Gypsy was slow mentally and had the mind of a five-year-old. She and Gypsy watched Disney movies and Gypsy often dressed as different princesses. They also went to sci-fi conventions. This is where things start to go airy for the seemingly joyful mother-daughter duo. I have linked some articles and videos from various documentaries that you can watch and look at to get more detailed account. This is just part one of the series to give a brief overview of who Dee Dee was before her and until her untimely demise. I wanted to do a brief background and history on each person involved with the Dee Dee Blanchard case. Once I have done the backstory of each of those involved, I'm going to go over the case in chronological order as the events and all the medical traumas happened, the trial, the convictions, and the aftermath of the release from prison. Also, a little note, I have all the links and everything for you in the description box below. I want to give a special shout out to the Timeless Child Reborn who has all of the clips pertaining to Gypsy Rose and her documentary that has really helped me get this video going and moving along. I will have his link as well, his channel link in the description box below if you want to go check him out and all the documentaries that he has posted. Have a wonderful day and be safe out there. Until next time, this is Spooky History with Max. Bye, you guys.